Hello, my name is Dr. Abdullah Rabiati. I've been asked to examine your ears today. Can I just check your name and date of birth? Hannah Perlman, the 11th of January, 91. Do you have any problems with hearing? No. Have you got any pain in either ears? No. And have you noticed any discharge from either ear? No. Excellent. So what I'd like to do is gel my hands and then we'll carry on with the examination. All right. Could I get you to pull your hair behind your ears, please? Okay. So I'm just inspecting your ear to see if there's any abnormalities there, which I can't see at the moment. There's no sign of any scars at the front of the ear or at the back of the ear. Just have a look on the other side as well. Very good. Now I'm just going to use this called an otoscope. It's just a light source to have a look down your ears, okay? Just keep your head perfectly still for me. Okay, it looks completely healthy. We'll just have a look at the other side. Very good. Now you told me that you don't have any hearing problems. No. I'm just going to stand behind you and whisper a number into your ear if you could say it loud and clearly for me. Yeah. Okay, and I'll do the same with the other ear. Thank you. The last bit of this examination is just to assess whether your hearing is the same in front of you and behind you, okay? Can you hear this? Yeah. Okay. Tell me when it stops. No. Okay. And tell me if it's louder in position one or two. One. Thank you. Can you hear this? Yeah. Tell me when it stops. No. Okay. Is it louder in position one or two? One. Excellent. Can you tell me if it's louder in either ear or the same? The same. Excellent. Thank you. That completes the examination. Thank you. Okay, so let's break down the ear examination. The first thing to do is always make sure you have the right patient. So name, date of birth and hospital number, if appropriate. Explain the procedure to them. Make sure that they're not in any pain they've not had any discharge from their ears, and they don't have any hearing problems. Make sure you've always gelled your hands before you started the examination. Hannah, can I get you to pull your hair back behind your ears? Okay. Okay. Just turn and face this way. Looking at the ear, it's important to get inspection perfectly right. First thing to notice is she has a perfectly normal ear. There's no congenital abnormalities. There's no discharge from the ear. There's no redness or swelling around the ear. You also need to note that there's no scar, which is usually seen at the front of the ear or in the post-auricular area as well, which she does not have. You would do this on both ears. After you've finished inspection, it's time to use the otoscope. You have to be very delicate when you're using this piece of equipment as there's a chance that you can perforate the patient's eardrum. It's made of two pieces. You have the earpiece, which will sit in the ear, and you have the light source itself. Make sure that they're firmly connected and it's not going to fall out or be loose. Make sure you have a good battery supply and that there's a prominent light when you switched it on. Now, this is all about technique. Never hold an otoscope like this. You hold it like a pencil. And the golden rule is if you're examining the right ear, you hold it in the right hand. If you're examining the left ear, you hold it in the left hand. Hannah, if you could turn your head, please. 
in an adult patient, you want to bring the ear up, backwards and out in all three planes. This will correct the trajectory of the ear canal and give you a direct viewing of the eardrum. You then place the otoscope in the ear, making sure to have your little finger rested against the patient's cheekbone before you start. Thank you very much. As you can see, it's a very controlled examination. You want to introduce the otoscope as far as you can so that you can see the eardrum clearly. Note down the landmarks of the eardrum when you're doing this. I would do the same on both sides. Finally, we'll use the tuning fork to check that the patient is hearing in both ears quite well. You can do a quick, simple hearing test on the patient by whispering in either ear while performing a distraction in the opposite ear. In the other video, we showed that the patient had normal hearing and we'll go on to using the tuning fork. A simple tap like that will set the tuning fork starting. Do not knock the tuning fork against other objects as they will break. It's important to note that you would use a 512 hertz tuning fork for an ENT examination, not a 256 hertz tuning fork, which you, you would use in a neurology examination. Check that the patient can hear this clearly. Yeah. And then stop the tuning fork and ask the patient when they can stop hearing the vibration. Yeah, it stopped. Once you've checked that the patient's understood the principle of this examination, move on to test air conduction and bone conduction. This is Rini's test. Is it louder in position one or two? One. Excellent. Just turn your head to the right, please. Air conduction is just by holding the tuning fork one centimetre away from the opening of the ear canal. Bone conduction is just holding the tuning fork against the mastoid process. In this case, she heard air conduction better than bone conduction, which is normal, and this is considered Rini test positive. You would then do the same on the other side. If the patient said that they heard bone conduction louder than air conduction, this is suggestive of an obstruction in the ear canal and would be conductive deafness. Should look straight ahead. This is Weber's test, placing the tuning fork above the head. At this point you ask the patient if they can feel the, hear the vibrations in both ears the same or louder in one. It's the same. Excellent. If the patient had a conductive hearing deafness in the right ear and Weber test localised to the right ear, this confirms that it's conductive deafness. If the patient had air conduction better than bone conduction in the right ear, but with Weber's test localised to the opposite ear, this suggests sensory neural deafness in this ear. That completes the ENT examination. It's important to note when examining the ears of a child is slightly different from examining the ears of an adult. This is mainly because the child will be moving around and make your position holding the otoscope quite precarious. Using the assistance of the mother or the father, have the child sat in this position with their legs in between the parent's legs. Use one arm to bring the child close into the body and the other arm to securely hold the head in position. With a child, you will only pull the pinner backwards and upwards. You don't need to come outwards with it. Make sure you use the correct size earpiece as well as they do have a smaller ear canal and you don't want to hurt them and again holding it like a pencil having the little finger out approach the child to examine the other's ear you do exactly the same principles <laughs>